and I just wanted to see. I just wanted to see where this person was. Mm-hmm. They could have said, "Hey, man, look, we don't got, we don't got four for you. We got two. If you take two, I'm like, yo, I'll take it because I want to see if you understand, like, my worth. If you understand, like, what kind of quality you're about to get out of me. Like, it's not about the money. It was not about the money for me. Mm-hmm. But I see you're, you know." You're busy, like, you want to pay for this and want to pay for that and want to pay for that. But you don't want to pay for my time. Which is... That's my time. So important, man. Time is a lot of fucking money these days. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Inspire to Inspire podcast, the place for actors, filmmakers, and content creators to be able to come here and connect the dots, listen to stories from people who are actually doing it, okay? Uh, today's guest, yo, we got a great guest today, man. I'm actually stoked. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to have this guy here, man. You know, we had an opportunity to do a movie together, and, um, you know, too much. There's a lot of power talks, a lot of building. was able to learn a lot from this man as well. Ladies and gentlemen, today we got Catfish Jean. He is a Haitian-American actor, writer, producer that grew up in the historic Overtown neighborhood of <laughs> Miami. Mother bitch. <laughs> I didn't know she was coming. I was trying to hold it so much. <laughs> I was trying to hold it. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, no, yo, they need to know who this man is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, graduated with a BFA in acting, he moved to Los Angeles and gained recognition by playing Squeeze in the Star's comedy series Survivor Remorse. His other credits include Shameless, American Crime Story, The Rookie, and he is currently in the upcoming, much anticipated feature film, To Leslie. Man, this guy has been really been killing it. Um, how can I say? I don't know if I want to keep going in the intro. I got some more stuff written down. You do? I have a lot more. I want to hear it. You want to hear it? Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, so, to Leslie, it's inspired by True Events. A West Texas single mother wins the lottery and squanders it just as fast, leaving behind a world of heartbreak. Years later, with her charm, running, and nowhere to go, she fights to rebuild her life and find redemption. Now, this movie has been getting so many different tweets from all kinds of stars around the world, such as Ed Norton, Charlize Theron, Brooke Shields, and on top of that, Jennifer Aniston. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have Catfish Jean. What's good? What's good? How you doing? You think I did good on the intro? You did good. You know, try to do my research. I thought, to... I thought you was going to go into my life story, how when I was a kid, I was homeless, and no, I'm just bullshit. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm letting you say that for everybody <laughs> else, man. I'm just I'm letting you say that for everybody else, man. Now, what's dope, everybody, the movie that uh, me and Catfish did together was actually the new remake of Roadhouse, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. Um, we got an opportunity to really work on this film for about almost two and a half, three months, and man, it was just long, long experience. It was long, crazy, amazing. Learned a lot. It was great. Well, you was not there as long as me. Yeah, you got there like a I month was, before me. Right? I was there from the rooter to the tutor. You got there in when though? Like August? August. I got there August. I want to say twenty second. Mm. Like when it started. Yeah. And this is in Dominican Republic, by the way. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, man. So let me ask you this question, man. So Catfish Gene from Miami. Mm-hmm. Where did the name Catfish come from? Where did the name Catfish come from? So how, how did that come to the table, man? Well, Catfish was a name that was given to me when I was roughly like 12, 13. Uh, um, when I got to high school at that young age, 13, um, it was this coach that wanted me to play football. I didn't want to play football. Mm-hmm. I played baseball. And uh, this coach was also my algebra teacher and my PE teacher. So I was just like a rebel in school. So, you know, when you're in PE, you have to wear certain freaking clothes. Yeah. 
our our school colors was like red and silver. I was wearing blue. Like I I was just so you scrapped their cribbing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still in this day. I was like, uh, I'm not man. I'm not wearing these colors. Um, but one day. I was sitting, well, we, we just did this workout and I was on this black top, just like lying down, like, cause I'm tired of shit. And then um, he looked at me. Now mind you, this this coach used to play for the Raiders. Mm. So he was like six, five, six, six, like big brawling, just, right? Yeah. Big ass dragon tattoo in the back of, of his back. And he was like, yo, since he's lying down, we about to run another mile. Mm. And so I'm on a, I'm on this black top, and I start like, basically looking, just flopping around like, man, I don't want to do this shit, blah blah. <laughs> and he was like, yo, you look like a big ass catfish rolling in the mud. Get your ass up, right? And then from there, everybody start calling me the name, and I was like, yo, I don't like this name. This stuck. name is bullshit. And stuck. It's stuck. Mm. But the craziest thing is when I graduated, because I asked him again, and I was like, yo, why you gave me this name, catfish? Mm. He was like, catfish are a resilient fish. It's hard to kill. They never give up. Catfish could live under the mud for like six months and would not die. Mm. I know you bitch and complain, but you're a catfish. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, bet. I was like, damn, why didn't you tell me this shit in the beginning? Like, I would have yeah, loved gym. the name. Facts. He was like, yeah, you was not ready for it. He was this Native American big ass dude, so he was doing all these parables speaking in parables and all that mm. shit but um yeah man that's how the name came about and when i got to college i was trying to get rid of it it just stuck so i said fuck it it just became a stage name it just became the name because yeah. that's that people look you up now it says catfish gene yeah like that's crazy yeah wow okay so let me ask you this thing you growing up in miami like how did how did acting even come about? Like, what got you into it? What was the starting point of it? Like, what's your why? Like, how did I even start? So, the way I got into acting is because um, I was always an animated kid. Mm. I was always cracking jokes. And my aunt, God rest of the dead, she was, uh, she was like the comedic, like, person in the family. Mm. So, I went to art school. So... When, 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 it's funny how it, it transitioned to that because I was into music first. Oh, shit. I, had a, I was in a boy group. No way. Yeah, I was in a where boy group. Where are those videos at? I don't know where they are. <laughs> they archived somewhere. I was in a boy group, and this art school, this magnet program that I went to, I went for choir. Hmm. And so at this magnet program, you know, you have black kids in this, you know, and we sing a certain type of way, and then this fucking lady, I, I remember her name till this you day. You can't stand her, I can Miss Vassell. Vassell. Right? Oh, Vassell. Very, <laughs> very opera type, you know what I'm saying, oh, trying to shit. teach us classical, how to sing, and I sang differently than Soulful. everybody else, you know, in this class. And, um, one day I passed by a, a drama class and I'm looking at motherfuckers on stage just doing whatever. I was like, yo, what the fuck? Mm. That's what I want to do. But then I went to my first play, Raising in the Sun, mm. the same school. And funny thing is my, my, my math teacher was in the play. Like, we're watching this play because he was always missing class. So we didn't know, like, you know, why he was missing class. Why he was, he was working. missing class all the time. And he's like, oh, yeah, my twin brother going to come in, and then he's going to teach the class. I'm like, man, Mr. Ganey, you bullshit. Yeah, Whatever yeah. you say. But working. I saw him, and I was the only uh, student in his math class that actually went to the play. So I saw him. I was like, what the fuck? That's Mr. Ganey. And then I'm like, yo, this is what I want to do. Because... Mm -hmm. Growing up, you didn't see, we didn't see that many like black faces on TV. And I didn't know, being from Miami, like, you know, you don't know the, the how, the where, how to actually get the in and compare, compared yeah. to living in LA. It's like, 
around you all the time is not that hard. You're like, oh, you want to hang out? It's like you? formulas. Right. Right. People can guide exactly. you and walk you in, give you some advice. And and get you, yeah, exactly. So, mm-hmm. um, and this is when, like, this is early on, so you couldn't just Google or YouTube or do none of this stuff like back AOL? in the day. Yeah, <laughs> AOL. <laughs> um, <laughs> I knew I wanted to be an actor. And so I was in this, my mom worked at New World School of the Arts, which is a high school, but it's also a college. That's badass. Um, and you get your degree from University of Florida if you go to the college. Mm. So my mom was asking if I wanted to go to New World, but I was like, Nah, I want to be in a school bunch of nerds. Um, <laughs> I can't, we can't um, No, nah, because the thing is, I, you know, huh, to get in this magnet program, you have to be fucking smart. I right? know, I know. So, magnet programs are usually tough. So, um, to go to a high school and then be around uh, these artsy people. Even though this is what you want to do, but I wanted to play sports. Yeah. So I chose to go to Miami Beach High School, and um, that's when everything just started. And it's funny, that's where I did my first movie, too. Mm. It was just some independent film. Um, <laughs> the funny thing about it, there's like, it was a director, he came to the school, he's like, yo, during the spring, we're gonna be here, we're gonna shoot for a week the school um, part of the movie, and I need some actors, right? So we audition, like, the, the, the drama kids audition to mm. be in this movie. So when I audition, I get in front of this, this director, and he gives me the sides, right? Mm. And I look at the lines, he's like, yeah, I want you to say this, but I look at the lines, I was like, that's it? Man, this is some bullshit. I don't want to fucking do it. It was like three lines. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you trying to get in there and like, I'm like go yo, off. I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, I got oh, chops, bro. Like, what's up? You know Give me something. Saying? Give me something. You and I just went in there and I just, yeah. I just read the shit. I didn't care. I was mm-hmm. like, da, 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 blah, 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 blah. That's what you want? He was like, mm. can you do it again? I was like, uh, that's it? Like, and I walked out. I go back to class. I'm like, man, this is some bullshit. Yeah, shit, that's not what it is. Come on, man. And then it was like, yo, you got the part. Because <laughs> I'm playing this bully in school. So I was like, oh, shit. Um, that's the first time I actually, and we got paid. Mm. So I was like, god damn, we getting paid? This is how much money you could make? For and three lines? And for three lines. So my, <laughs> mind lines? Just started, my mind just started going. I was like, oh, shit, yeah, this is what I really want to do. And so I had to figure out once I graduated to like how to come to the West Coast. Mm. So um, me and my homie, we was like, "Yo, we gotta go to L. We gotta we gotta go to California." I was like, "I gotta go to California, but I don't want to go to L.A. just yet because I don't want to go in and get swallowed from a city I don't mm. really know. Even though Miami is a big city, but." LA, it, LA is different because you LA need it's clicky. I hear you need resources. And when I say resources, just in terms of like connections, you know, and relationships, right. you know, even just one relationship can make the world of a difference for right. somebody when they first get to LA. Right. You know? So people think I'll be bullshitting how we chose a school. So he's like, where do you want to go? I was like, we got to be close to Southern California, right? He was like, oh. all right. So we took a map. I don't know if y'all ever saw, ever watched Coming to America. Yeah. The first one. I ain't talking about that. Nah, not the second, John. The, the original. Remember when he, yeah. remember when he like, spin the, um, the Just map and he to, put yeah. his hands? Yeah. So that's what we did. We took the map no way. and we went to California and we started running our hands up and down. And once he said stop, right? He said stop. stop. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, hi. I was like, what the fuck is a oh, hi? Mm. So we looked it up. Like, yeah, there ain't shit there. And then we looked next to it, it was like Ventura. All right. We looked at Ventura College. Campus yeah. looked shitty. Yeah. I was like, uh. Ventura's there. And I was like, Carpinteria, uh, Santa Barbara. I was like, Santa Barbara. Santa nice. Barbara. And we looked it up. We was like, holy shit. Bro. 
I yeah. said, hey, hey, he was like, that's where we going. And that's that and that's how it happened. And wait, so you, did you go to UCSB? No, I went to City College first. Okay. And then I went to Cal Lutheran University. Got you. Got you. So how that all came about, because my, my dad worked at a college, my mom worked at New World, and I could have gone to the college, Miami Dade College, for free. And my parents gave me a lump sum of money. It was like, look, you go to school here for free, here's some money, um, buy a car, get a job, blah, 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 blah. Do your thing. And then I wait, I waited to the, until the check cleared in my account. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I bought like a suitcase. I Just started like, go. basically my parents were like, yo, where the fuck are you going? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm out. They're like, out where? I'm like, I'm going to school in Santa Barbara. Oh my God, it was. Were they cool with it? They oh, hell no, they really? weren't cool with it. No, they were like. Really? They wanted you to go where your mom's and your family was teaching, yeah, right? They wanted me to Damn. go where my, where my dad was working. I was like. I think, I think that's, that's, that's so dope though, because I'm going to cut you off, but it's like, you know, I'll, I always say, uh, you know, don't do things for your parents, do it for yourself, right? And like, uh, when I was in high school, I had a few scholarships for like swimming and diving, right? One of them was UCSB. I didn't go because I was like, yo, if I go to this school, knowing my spe myself, especially at that time, I was like, I'm gonna flunk out. I'm gonna party. It was the number one party school with all the girls there. I was like, there's no way. So I told my parents, I said, I'm not taking none of my scholarships. I'm gonna go to community college. They're like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, I wanna be a swimmer or a diver. Like, yeah, I box, yeah, I swam, I dive, cool, but so I'm gonna be an actor. Cause I want to, I want to, I know this sounds crazy, but like, I don't want to take none of these scholarships. Like I'm going to go to community college. I ended up going to LA film school, but I respect the fact that like you were so at least tapped in with your purpose, knowing like the same for me, man, it's not my route. And rather you guys like this or not, I know that this is where my heart's taking me. Right. And I need to trust that. And that's crazy to hear on where it led. You yeah. Know? Because a lot of my friends, because the, cr the craziest thing is I, I didn't say, in high school I was playing baseball, but then I started playing football. Mm. So I started playing both sports. So a lot, of my, a lot of my friends that were playing football, they went to FSU, they went to Pitt, they mm. went to like West Virginia, like all these like D1 schools on the, on the, on the East Coast. And I think, I went, I went to a visit to Iowa. And I thought I was gonna go go there, and I was just like, man, this shit is cold as fuck. Yeah, bro. That's like as soon as I got off the plane, I started coughing because it's so dry. It's Iowa, and it was fucking <laughs> just white. <what? laughs> bro, <laughs> literally. There's no and way. Figuratively, bro. I feel you, bro. I'm cool. Iowa ain't no no disrespect, but <laughs> it was like y'all built bro, different, bro. It was like, <laughs> I was like, damn. Like these are. I call. I say mm. these are regular white people. Mm. Like in Miami, you have white people, but they speak Spanish. They could be from. The rest uh, of them. Yeah, but <laughs> Iowa. I was like, yo, these are some regular ass white people. Like I've never seen this before in my life. Mm. And I was like, uh, yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I didn't like how the houses were built there. They were the all made the food with was cooked. wood and shit like that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, nah, this ain't, this ain't, this it's ain't not, It's me. not the vibe. Nah, yeah. so, um, so I went to Santa Barbara, which, which was, which was really good. Uh, took some acting classes at the school there. And then I got into, did my two years. I got into, um, uh, the Kowloon. Mm -hmm. Got to Kowloon, which, which was like, my story is so weird because a lot of people, they go to college and then they go to a master's program. Mm -hmm. So they either go to San Diego, Yale, Juilliard, you know, Tisch. Juilliard. Juilliard. Shout out to inside joke. Um, um, <laughs> Juilliard um, down DePaul, the street. You know, they go to these like uh, Carnegie. These prestigious. Mellon, yeah, you know, you know, and academic. once I got to my school, once I got there, it's so crazy how, like one of the football players, the running back, uh, he basically hooked me up with 
uh, manager that was working out of his girl's like dance studio in um, Granada Hills. Mm. You know, it was a dance studio with a whole bunch of kids and, you know, they're in the industry. And so she was managing like actors. And so he's like, yo, man, I'm going to get you with my, with, with this lady. And I was just like, yeah, whatever, man. Uh, heard it all before. And then I meet the lady at a party and we talking and she's like, I like you. I like your look. I want to sign you. I was like, what the fuck? And you don't know if she's being serious or not, because it could just be someone just yeah, talking that like, shit. You know what, what the I'm fuck saying? is this? Yeah. And then she signed me, and I was I had a manager, so my trajectory went totally different compared to a lot of my friends I went to undergrad with, because they went to the MFA program, and um, and that's how they got signed to whatever agency after they did their two years. You know what's crazy? I, I, feel, I feel like I feel like it goes to the, there's this quote that I love where it says. You know, sometimes you have to position yourself for the magic to happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I love the fact, again, going back to, I feel like a lot of my connections, a lot of my relationships have literally been attracted just based off where I position myself, based off what's aligned with my purpose. So it's cool hearing the trajectory of your story. You're like, all right, well, I grew up as this kid who was into sports, into athletics, you know, my family has this background, but then... As I got older, I realized, man, I want to go more this path. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I want to follow this, leaving the California and not going here, dealing with the family. Because that's the thing that, that causes a lot of people to have fear on pursuing their dreams. Because they're like, oh, my family might not support me or um, I'm getting backlash. I'm dealing with it or whatever it is. But to take all of that and then be like, yo, I'm going to go to L.A. The way y'all picked on the map is hilarious. That shit is yeah. funny as hell. I love that shit, first of all. But then for y'all to go to L.A., and then you're like, I'm in SB, and now you're now being positioned around new environments and new groups that are aligned with what you like to do, and you attract an agent. Right. Yeah. Is it an agent or manager? A manager. You attract a manager. Yeah. But it's like, that's like the perfect example of like, when you follow your purpose, and you, you, you stay on like, a consistent path of like, all right, look, this is what I want to do. I want to be around people who are going to make me better and put myself in environments that are going to help me excel than where I was at prior. And mm-hmm. a lot of stuff just comes to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is that the craziest shit? It, like, I didn't tell you this. Once I got to Santa Barbara, um, I went to my to my bank and there's a, a banker there. And he was like, yo, what do you do? And I was like, oh, man, you know, I play football here, blah, blah, blah. He's like, all right, but what do you what do you want to do? I was like, oh shit, you know, I'm, you know, I want to become an actor, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh really? Mm-hmm. He's like, hey man, uh, ah, man, I went to this place in Burbank and I got me an agent there, blah, blah, blah. You can go there and you can get your agent. Now this time, when I say I had tunnel vision, mm-hmm. I had tunnel vision. You could have told me to go to Constellation of the Stars, mm. 2000 Constellation of the Stars, <laughs> and you could go to CAA and get you, and I would have I, like, I would walked in there like, I yo, I'm here for, so that's what I did. That's that I went to this. Yeah. I went to this place from mm. Santa Barbara. I went to this place in Burbank. Mm. When I got there, I looked at the building. That shit said, Central casting, right? Now, mind you, if y'all don't know what central casting is, central casting is major, but for extras, right? Yes. So, I didn't know what the fuck it was. So, I walk in the building, and I see a line of people, and then above their head, it was like, extras, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, yo... I'm, when I say a line of people, it was like a long ass line. Man, I walked in front and I was like, uh, "Excuse me, um, I'm here to look for an agent." And the lady looking at me crazy, like, "Hey, sir, don't you see this line?" I was like, "Yeah, I see this line. This is a line full of extras. extras. I'm an actor. I'm an actor, right?" And she was like, "Sir, what, what are you talking about?" I was like, "Yo, I'm looking for an agent. How? Where the agent? Where can I go talk to an agent?" She's like. So give me your social security number, right? A uh, social security card. I was like, no. Why that's you need that so for? Sus. That's the most random yeah, thing. Yeah, I was just like, like why, what? why, why, why you need that? She's like, <laughs> sir, this is this is a place for background mm-hmm. actors only. You won't find an agent here. I was like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, this goddamn dude set me up for uh, okie doke. So 
I just based that's that's how it was, man. I was so gullible. Not gullible. I was just so gun ho to like like I said, you could say, yo, go to two thousand constellation stars, CAA, and you could get you know, go you'll go There's get no your fear, though. It was no, no it was no, no, fear. Fear. no fear. I was not and I was not afraid of failing at all. Or or being told no. Yeah, I was just like, Hey, I'm here for, if I would have went to CAA I would be like, yo, I'm looking for an agent. Who who can I talk to? They were like, yo, this guy is fucking insane. That's the crazy part. Like, it's no fear, right? No fear at all. Yeah. And that's what I love because I feel like that's what really separates most people from the successful ones is the ones who are willing to go the extra mile. Like, what things are you willing to do that most people wouldn't do, which will mm-hmm. turn you to the person that most people want to follow? Because they're like, well, what do you do? Um, you know, for, for me... My my curiosity is like, you know, hearing your story, you're like, I had no fear. You know, I I I was so tunnel vision, you could have told me this, you could have I would have went here. My question is, what was really driving that fuel? Like, why did you want to become an actor? Like, what about acting or being in this industry of filmmaking, you know, with what it comes with, knowing the the rejection, the clicks, all the ups and downs that come with it, what made you want to dive into this and still fall in love with this craft? See, in the beginning, okay, for me, like, getting that, um, getting that project when I was in high school, first audition ever, I book it, right? And then I auditioned for something else, like, it was some short film back home, and I booked that. So, at the time, I was like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm batting 100% right now, because, you know, there I haven't heard no yet. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and also, I actually did a lot of fucking research on black actors. I did a lot, man. Like, mm. uh, Belafonte, Sidney Poitier, Greatest. Cosby, Greatest. Bill Cosby, yeah. Jamie Foxx, Will Smith. Martin Lawrence, um, Denzel Washington. I I was like a student, and I used to watch. Like when I say I watch film, mm-hmm. I would sit there and I would just watch them. And I'm like, yo, why do they walk like this? Why do they sit like this? Why do they do this? Why is he talking like this? Like blah 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 blah. Like everybody that I'm talking about had like a a signature, and it just became. Them, there's like it's when you when you, when you when you book a Denzel or whatever the case may be, mm. you're not booking them to like uh, you're booking them because who he is. So yeah. Now he's this grand, he's like this star now. So I was looking at these older actors and just trying to learn something from them. I'm talking about like I used to watch stuff. I don't know if you ever heard of Amos and Andy, Mm-mm. but Amos and Andy was first a radio show. And then became a series, like back in like the night, like nineteen, I want to say nineteen thirties, nineteen forties. Oh, so super early then, like super, black and white. Yeah, type. black and white. Okay. And I used to watch that because I, was, I, because this was a space of not that many black folks. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to learn like what drive them and what pushed them and how they got where they went. Compared. And even just those those actors you named, the Sidney Poitiers, the Denzels, the Martin Lawrences, or even the Will Smith, it's like, if you look at a lot of their roles, a lot of them are so iconic, you know? So it's like, what did those men have to not only go through to position themselves to be able to manifest those things, but right. it's like, what skill sets did they have to obtain along that journey? And that's what fascinated you, because right. you feel like you, you resonate, you saw yourself in those same type of roles. See, I love that. That's so dope. Because, you know, for me, like, I feel like, I feel like having positive representations on film um, is one of the most influential things that can affect kids, right? That's why, even for example, this, when Mermaid came out, it was like a huge phenomenon across the internet right now. They're like, Muriel is black, Mm -hmm. right? And to me, there's some people that weren't happy with it, and there's a lot of people that were. And to me, it was so beautiful watching a lot of those videos with like these like um, 
little black girls, right, all around the world going, whoa, she looks like me. Like, wow, like, look at this person. And I feel like in every aspect of film and television, it's so important to have those, you know, those, those, those people that can just show you, like, hey, it's a possibility you can do this too. Mm -hmm. You know, so now you're, you're, you're studying these guys, right? You're like, all right, Sidney Poitiers, the Zinzos, um, and, and, and they're, they're inspiring you. You're like, okay, I love what this craft is. What made you actually like take the like leap of faith to be like, nah, like this is for me. Like I know this is for me because there's a difference between, you know, some people have like a good idea of like, like, you know, I've been in the car sometimes with the homies and we'll be freestyling and stuff and, and then they'll be like, yo, you wanna go make a song? I'm like, that's a whole different type of work. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're just having fun right now, but like to actually now go sit down and now develop a craft is a whole nother ordeal. You yeah. know? So like what what was that like ceiling point? You know, you're like, man, like, nah, like, yeah, I'm inspired, but like I can do this. Like I have value. I can actually bring something to the table, you know? I think like I, t I call I call those guys out, but I'll tell you who like really like inspired me. Because when you watch when you watch anything, you're looking at it and you want to see somebody that look like you, right? And I think who really like inspired me was seeing like an Anthony Anderson or an Ice Cube or a Forrest Whitaker because it's like, all right, these are bigger dudes on TV, mm. right? And um, once I saw once I saw them, I was like, oh, shit. Okay, there's, there's room for me. There's a mm. space for my type. And, uh, and at the same time, at the... When I was a, when I was young, I was in thinking about types and all that. It's, in my mind, I just okay. Oh, I see this guy. I see this guy. He looked like me. Okay, cool. There's there's you just like feel the imagination, the fire. Yeah, there's like know? okay, boom. There's there's room for me to go in because, you know, you don't see that many like bigger dudes on TV, or you see big dudes on TV, but they're always a. Like a bouncer or bodyguard. Like some or fucking like funny like type a, or of. Or like a lackey sometimes. Yeah, like, and mm. I, I was like, yeah, you know, there's people that love to do that type of work and it's cool with them. I, I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. do what you do, but that's not me. Yeah. Like, um, I'll tell you this. I did a project. And it was my first project that, like, I was like the lead. It's a it's a short that it was um, up for an Oscar. Um, I did that project, and I start showing people my work. You know, I'm talking about like Michael Malley who's a showrunner for Hills, and he was a showrunner for uh, Survivors of Morse, Chris Bauer, um, who's like a friend, mentor to me, Michael Morris. I'm like showing all these like... Uh, my, established my, my, figures. Yeah, established people, like established figures, established friends. And I showed a good friend of mine, Karamu, who's a great actor, writer, mm. right? But he's more so of a writer. And um, and he keeps it real. I love that with me. And he was like probably the last person I really wanted to show. I wanted to see like what he say about it. Mm -hmm. Cause Karamu, quite as kept, he's a ghostwriter for a lot of these movies. Like a lot of movies, you like, oh shit, this shit is fucking. Yeah. He wrote it. Smart. Right. <clears throat> I showed him the film, and he was like, yo. Catfish, I see. I see the problem now that you're having. And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Man, you're a fucking leading man, but you just don't know that you are a leading man." Mm. Like I've never. I was wow. Like, Nigga, what the fuck are you talking about? Like I've never saw myself as a leading man because I'm looking my at my stature. I'm looking at my size, and you don't really see 
that many big dudes, or if it's Jonah Jonah Hill, yeah. then it's just like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. But he's like, yo, you you should be going out for leading man shit. And I was Absolutely. Like, I was like, yo, that sounds great. Mm. But I know what industry I'm in. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's it's a business. It's all about sales and oh, who could sell this and who could make us this money. Mm-hmm. That's what business we're in. But I know once the right person actually see this, they're going to be like, oh, shit. Because every time people see me, they always say, oh, you do comedy. Mm-hmm. You that, uh, you Mr. Funny yeah. Man. Yes, I'm funny. It's, that shit is not hard for me. Yeah. But I need stuff with like texture to it. Like, that's raw. That, that takes me deep, deep in the ocean. And I'm just like, like a Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, go hide out, become this character, and come and show this fucking beautiful artwork, like, and then go out, go back to hiding. Mm-hmm. Oh, we need you back, Daniel. All right, I'll right, right, come mm-hmm. back and blah, blah, blah. Show this fucking, Jesus Christ, everything this dude touch is, is like gold. Gold. And, that, and that's how, and that's how I am. And, and, uh, and I noticed like when it comes to TV, cause I started seeing myself and I was like, yo, I think I'm, I'm more of a movie person than mm-hmm. TV. Because especially like with movies, you can actually be you. You could take time with it. You can yeah. do what you want compared the, the, to the like the pacing is way different. Pacing is way, way different, different. Yeah. compared to TV. Absolutely. It's like all right, all right. This episode is forty seven forty seven minutes, and we got scheduling. Just say the line. Just say the line. Just yeah. Just, it's harder to improv on certain shows. Certain shows right. they have that room for it, but like for what. You and I are doing when it comes to like drama, like raw type of, you know, shows. Like, it, for example, Shameless or Ray Donovan. Mm-hmm. Like those type of shows, uh, there's not too much wiggle room to improv so much because the writers are so meticulous, right, about what they're writing about. Right. You know, um, uh, but keep going. I want to hear what you're gonna see. And I think my inspiration just, you know, what I mean, like I looked, I look back at my parents and how hard it was for them to come here and uh i'm just like yo you know i just want to make these people proud do you feel like do you feel like the foundation of your family is the reason why you're able to handle the things that come with this business now like how did you deal with rejection or when you did start dealing with the nose or did certain experiences of um, being up for certain roles ever make you bitter or make you feel a certain way, you know? Because I, I know as it, actors, it, 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 you know, in all honesty, um, the nose really, really hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, Why? At the time, mm-hmm. because it's like, all right. Being a new when you when you when you come into the space of being a new actor, you got this agency, you have this manager, and you you want to make every everyone happy. Mm-hmm. So you're not booking, you're not booking, you're not booking, you're not booking. Now you're like thinking, damn, I need to get paid. How I'm gonna pay for this? Mm-hmm. Uh, how can I? Um, you start feeling uh, desperate, desperate, mm. and you're like, "Damn, if I don't book, damn, damn, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get dropped." Right? You start feeling all this pressure, all this on fucking you, pressure this on you. Yeah. And you, you, you got rent to owe. Like, you got, and mm-hmm. you just, and you going into offices, and you're like, "Hey, hey, hi, mm-hmm. my name is," huh? and you think like, "This nigga is desperate. Get yeah. the fuck out of here." Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And then and what they'll do, they'll tell you in the audition. Great job, thank you for coming. Yeah, in. it's like great job, you, thank you. You see how desperate this kid is, and, right? And you just sit there, you like, uh, mm-hmm. oh yeah, they said, oh no, I was good, and then like you don't hear nothing back, and you just like, oh, this, 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 this game is not for the weak. It's not. It's not for the weak, man. Mm-hmm. And I think right now, 
I'm in a space of, I don't give a fuck. And doesn't that make the biggest difference? Bro. <laughs> I do not give a fuck. You can't. Because I always used to downplay how good I am. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's taboo to talk about how good you are. It's very taboo. You gotta play this docile and humble. Hey, yeah, I know. No, fuck that. Mm-hmm. I'm good. You know, you know. Here's the thing. Here, here, here's what uh, you know. Sometimes this is one of the things that me and my family would talk about, right? Uh, when people say ego, right? Sometimes people say you need to remove ego. Or I think ego is important when it comes to what you love, right? in terms of recognizing your value. And, and just bear with me here on where I'm about to go with this before anybody starts thinking ahead. The reason why I'm saying this is because if you think of somebody like Kobe Bryant, right? He knew that he was great based off of the work he put in. He wasn't just a talker. This man was up early every morning, was putting in the work while his teammates were out partying. This man is in the gym. So he knows with no doubt, no fear, when I step on the court, this shit is mine. Right. Because there's this, I don't give, I don't, I don't, I, to excuse my language, but I don't give a fuck about none of you guys because the work I'm putting in, I know what I can bring and I don't know what I'm going to do and this is my time to show that, you know? And, and hearing the way you're explaining, you're like, no, like, I'm good, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's, you know how you say it may be taboo. I think it's really amazing to recognize value, especially in this industry, because you already know a lot of times being an actor, look, as big as actors can be, we're the bottom of the totem pole in the filmmaking movie. We are the pawn. There's so, we film for six months, they take this movie and work on it for another year. Yeah. Yeah. We're, 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 there. it's like we come in, we do the job, and that is that. But then once we're done with our work, it's like we, we're, we're done. What's, we're what's done. Next? We're, but these producers, these directors, the right, there's so much that goes into it. So right. it's like being able to walk into a room with that type of confidence, or not even to a room now, because now we're doing a lot of self tapes. Yeah. We're doing a lot of self tapes, but now you can feel it through the tape. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, what, what used to be considered a great self-tape back in the day is now considered good. So now to really book things, you really need to step it up because right. everything is self-tape submission. Right. So hearing somebody like you, man, where, again, I, I look at your track record, right? Mm -hmm. To me, seeing, seeing somebody's track record um, says a whole lot more about them than I feel like they can say about themselves because it's like, Nah, man, like, look at the track. Like, he's been booking this, been doing that. Like, he's been working on this, he's been doing that. And it's like, it shows the progression. Like, people don't know, this movie, Roadhouse, we just got done doing, this is a major multi-million dollar movie. To be exact. I wasn't going to say the number, but million dollar film, man. And, and, and look, this movie is, is, is filled with all kinds of big names, but everybody who's, who's in it, I feel like truthfully earned their spot. You know, and, and I look at the way you move, bro. It's like you're very, um, how can I say? It's like you have, a, like, to me, like, I feel peaceful when I get around you, bro. You know, and I feel like that works. That's like a lot of self work, you know, having yeah. inner peace, bro, and being able to be like, like, again, this is all going back to the point of not giving a fuck in a healthy way. And when I say not giving a fuck, it's actually choosing to let go, right. choosing to let go of. Um, well, do they like me? Am I good enough? Choosing to let go of the doubt, choosing to let go of like, is this for me? Like, no, because when you put in your work and you work for it, you know, you walk to the room, you kill it. If you don't get the role, you can still walk out there with the peace of mind, not reeking of this desperation, right. you know? Because I'm gonna tell you this, I've done, you know how they say, oh, actors or artists need to do 10,000 hours of mm -hmm. something. Bro, <laughs> I can't tell you how much free work I've done. Yeah, I've done so much free work, like seeing from a no budget to 
hey, we got some pizza for you. But the thing is, <laughs> and that's still no, no answer. But my my thing is, I I was always like, cool. Mm. I was always like, let's work, yeah. let's work, let's work, let's work, because I feel like, okay, I'm not doing this to, you know, I'm doing this to like sharpen my iron. Like, all right, let me sharpen this knife real quick. Mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead. And I remember it was another project. It was another short that they wanted me to do. And they start putting me through all the rigmaroles of stuff. And I was just like, mm. I was like, bro. Like, I started feeling myself. I was like, mm, I feel like I'm getting to that place of, uh, yeah, nigga, you're going to have to pay me for yeah. this. Right now, yeah. mind you, <laughs> I didn't ask for. I was like, "Yo, give me, give me four hundred dollars, and let's do this." Like I, and I just wanted to see. I just wanted to see where this person was. Mm-hmm. They could have said, "Hey, man, look, we don't got, we don't got four for you. We got two. Would you take two? And I'm like, "Yo, I'll take it because I want to see." If you understand, like, my worth, mm-hmm. if you understand, like, what quality, what kind of quality you about to get out of me, like, it's not about the money. It was not about the money for me, mm-hmm. but I see you're, you know, you're busy, like, want to pay for this and want to pay for that and want to pay for that, but you don't want to pay for my time, which is that's my time, so like, important, man. Time is a lot of fucking money these days. It's just like, yo, it's my time. Like, if I could spend time doing what the fuck I want to do, nigga, sit around, play video games, scratch my ass. Like, it's my time. Mm -hmm. But that's when you show somebody, like, oh, I know you're worth, I know you're worth more than this is. And then that's when I was just like, that's when I was like, I got to the place of like, yo, a lot of motherfuckers, don't respect your time. Once they, oh, he'll do this shit for free, then them motherfuckers, everybody's just like, oh, he'll do this for free. Yep. And I, I had to learn quick, like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I, I'm gonna ask and see. Yo, give me so and so. So and so. Well, the thing is, if you don't value, if you don't treat yourself with the value, everybody else is gonna treat you the way you treat yourself. If you're right. treating yourself like that, if you, if you're not recognizing that with doing yourself, like. Me and one of my best friends, um, Adam El Shawwe, we just what's up, my boy? We just had a conversation. Yeah, I'm turning to the camera. Oh, <laughs> I was like, that bitch looked out. <laughs> he's like, you know, he's a regular. I was like, Yo, why he's, he's, he's an Tell Egypt right now. <laughs> yeah, I so said he was the one that was uh, co-hosting the first couple episodes with me as well. <coughs> right. Uh, but my boy had done moved to Egypt. But again, the reason why I brought Adam up is because, for example, um, me and him used to always just talk about the fact that, like, all right. When you walk into a room, when you, when you do a project, how are you treating yourself? How are you carrying yourself? You know, do you carry yourself with a energy of being like desperate and everybody can smell it and people would treat you as such? Or do you carry yourself with confidence and knowing that you're meant to be there? And I feel like, you know, going off of what you just said about, again, value, right? We're talking about value here. When an actor finally realizes like, Look, man, I put in a lot of free work. I've paid my dues. I've done schooling. I've done auditions. Whatever your path has been in terms of just like doing a lot of repetition of things, you know, uh, it gets to a point, man, where like if you don't speak up, you're going to keep getting ran over. If you don't say anything, if you don't actually speak up and say something like, hey, look, eh, then people are going to keep giving you because that's how you value yourself right so how's anybody going to value at more if you keep operating like this in this frequency right you know what i'm saying so when it comes to you now and and the success that you've now manifested right from your body of work what do you do outside of acting to keep you balanced like you have any hobbies or what keeps you like from not mentally losing yourself in this industry with everything that goes on you know what i'm saying um I go to the gym. <laughs> so I just get these games, um, bro. I just grind, bro. <laughs> I fucking go to the gym. Uh, but also, 
I know that being in this industry, you can't only be a fucking actor these days. Yeah. And so I'm in different spaces of producing shit. Mm -hmm. Like, or it's like, no, okay, now this is a new leg and I have to learn this and I have to try to figure this out because if we look at all our counterparts, our comrades, or everybody now is a producer. Yeah, absolutely. Michael B. Jordan, producer. Aldous Hodge, producer. Edwin Hodge, producer. Look at Zendaya. Zendaya, producer. Like everybody's getting in that space yeah. of producing now. And it's like, you don't have to, like, once you start to produce your own stuff, you don't have to beg for work. You don't have to wait for somebody to say, hey. Uh, You're not at the mercy of somebody's yes. Exactly. Hey, we're, we're ready to give you another job. It's yeah. just like, nah. Yeah. I can produce and make my own shit and always work on my on my time on or my brand. dime or, or work when I want to work, mm -hmm. you know, compared to being a, only an actor, it's, it's very, <clears throat> it's very difficult because you're just sitting there waiting by the phone or I'm well, waiting by emails. Oh, did I get one? Damn. I ain't get shit today. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> looking at this, looking at your phone That's for a goddamn shit. audition. That's the like, realest shit, boy. <laughs> when you could be working on yourself, when you could be working mm -hmm. to be better. Like, I know, for one, I have a project. Because you, you was asking me about a project, mm -hmm. but I have a project about Marcus Garvey mm -hmm. that I want to do. I've done the teaser, right? I know. Which I've seen is fire. I did, I did the books on how much it would cost because I, I want to do a short first. Mm -hmm. I, I broke the cost down. Like, I did the work, the work. of a fucking executive producer. And. I'm so, because this is my baby, I'm so afraid to like push it out and um, do like an Indiegogo or Kickstarter where when I have friends, I'm like, yo, man, just put it on the Kickstarter, do it on Indiegogo. I'm like, yeah, that's, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. But everybody always say, don't use your own money. Use other people's money to shoot your shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm tired of asking mm. people, hey man, because I had so many, I had like a few people on the line to give me the funds for the project so we can shoot it and we have this person, we have that person, blah, blah, blah. And it, it, all this shit falls through. Mm. But when you have your own money and you be like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to shoot it myself. And I think a lot of people might look at you like, oh, that was stupid, use your own money. But at the same time, a lot of people look at you like, Oh, that's fucking respect. Yeah. Because I don't have to listen to anybody else to tell me how I'm going to do my shit. Yeah. It's like, okay, I invested 80 grand in this. It's mine. Mm -hmm. If it flops, if it doesn't do shit, hey, damn. Okay. 80, 80 grand down the, down the drain. But it's a, it's a learning process. Now, if I want to go into different places, like, yo, I EP'd my own project. I know what to do. I know how to do it. It's all a learning. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a it's a it's a it's a trial and error type of situation. It is. And um, and that's where I am now. Like, I, man, I look at this damn teaser all the time, and I'm just like, damn, what the should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Should I put it out? Like I'm always fighting with myself yeah. when I know I was like, yo, just put that shit out. If people, if people, if people gravitate to it, they gravitate. If they don't, mm. they don't. At yeah. least you never know, cause you never know who will see it. You Especially on the ground, you never know who's gonna share it, who's gonna. Bro, like, oh, we have shit. eyes on this, bro. You have the right eyes on you as well. So, like for example, right? I love what you said. You're like, ah, should I do it? Should I not? Because as an artist. As a creative, I'm going to say, as a creative, you know, the fear of something not being perfect can hinder a lot of momentum. It really can, you know. And going back to 
what you said about just being an actor in this business, right? Um, you know, being at the mercy of somebody else's yes for your whole career at some point is going to really debilitate you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to really just drag you down because, look, and the, the, the thing that my dad always says is Hollywood is loyal to itself. And what that means is as big as you are, as m m many projects and movies and things you can do and blow up, there's always going to be Hollywood's next best thing, mm -hmm. right? And it's always going to come to a point where they're going to want to go with that next thing. So when you're at the mercy of somebody's yes for your whole life, when you stop getting that yes, it's like, what do you do? It's like, well, I, I've been like, you know, but now I'm like in calls or like what's going on. And that's when you hear stories like from guys like Brendan Fraser, you know, when Hollywood stopped calling him. You know, this guy was doing all these movies, actually putting his body on, his, on the line. He started getting these injuries, and all of a sudden he wasn't able to do the things that he was able to do in the past. And what did they do? They gave it to the next guy coming in, The Rock, which is somebody he helped. But at the end of the day, when I heard him speak about the situation, I thought it was really interesting for him to take his own accountability to recognize how Hollywood was moving because he was like, I was putting my body on the line. And then as soon as I couldn't, you stop calling me. And it was like, wait, okay, hold on. Whoa. You know, and it, it, and it, it could put certain people through spirals, but I feel like having that balance of creating your own content, being a filmmaker who is producing their own things, like I'd rather be content for a podcast, content for YouTube, social media, if you're creating films, you're writing shows, like, but you're still, it's still within the world of filmmaking and acting. For example, my, uh, my, one of my best friends, Christian Pierce, I call him Cap. So all the boys, we call him Cap. Um, he has a, uh, a plethora of like hit YouTube videos, right? When YouTube first came out, he was one of the, him and uh, our homie Jimmy Tatro have a, a YouTube channel called Life Corner Jimmy. And they're one of the early like YouTubers who were blowing up, right? Yeah. And it was so dope to see how they started from their phones because they didn't want to wait. They didn't want to keep asking. They're just like, guys, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just not wait. Let's just do it and see what happens. Let's just go, right? And they, they, they stay consistent, building, building, building to, to the point where they had not only some of the most viral videos on YouTube, but when they created the show Real Bros of Simi Valley, it was like the number one watch on Facebook Watch. It has millions of, 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 of trending videos, clips, and it's just from their body of work from when they started in college to now, it's like not only are they doing full-on production shows that they're getting budgets on but they're also starring in uh, uh, other new films and series but it all came from just taking initiative of just doing it right mm -hmm. and one thing that he always tells me he's like look you already have everything you need don't wait because for me I've been learning even in my own life the difference between procrastination there's two kinds of procrastination you have deadline procrastination which is most college students deal with right you get hit with a midterm two months is due they're like, all right, well, if I work on this, it'll yeah. be done. You, you do it two days before. Oh, shit. shit. And then now you're stressing out, right? Next thing you know, now then there's procrastination. There's life procrastination where it's not based off of deadline, right? And what that procrastination is, is procrastinating maybe getting out of an old friendship, procrastinating getting out of an old relationship. You're procrastinating on removing yourself from an environment. You're procrastinating on actually putting yourself f first, Right. and take care of what you want to do instead of watering somebody else's grass all the time. Mm -hmm. When you're watering somebody else's grass all the time, their lawn is getting beautiful and grown and looking great. Yours is still in pebbles and dirt because you're yeah. not giving yourself that water. You know, So being able to let go of the things we can't control but then work on the things we can't control, like you said, producing the Marcus Garvey project, right? Um, I think it's so important for you to put it out. I want to encourage you to put it out, bro. Because even with me with this podcast, man, I started doing some of these episodes like a year and a half ago. And, you know, a year goes by, man. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at these podcast episodes, bro. And I'm like, these are so powerful. Why am I putting these out yet? It's not because of me. It's because of the things that these that my, my, my friends and, 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 and people I'm really close with are actually saying in education. I was like, man, I, I would feel like I wouldn't be listening to my purpose in terms of trying to service other people by holding information like this. Right. That's like me and you doing this episode now, and I just don't put it out. I'm like, oh, there's so many gems. There's, why? What, what's the fear? Is it 
judgment? Is it like, you know, am I, at the end of the day, it's in your own, your own head. And I had to realize, going back on the procrastination thing, I'm like, what are certain things within my life that I might be procrastinating on? One of the things I realized was with my own work. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I love acting, right? I love being able to do these shows and these films and, you know, the shit that we do. We go travel to the Dominican Republic. We're there for two and a half months and we're doing this whole experience. But, like, at the end of the day, like you said, there's so much that's out of our control in this industry. And, and, and being able to create and use your ability to uh, share your gem, you know, because your purpose is like a gem, bro. It's like a special diamond, you know. You just want to flex that everywhere you go. But... When somebody sees the people you do show it to, they're gonna be like, "Whoa! Like, what's that? Like, that's whoa! Holy!" And it's, it's based on when you choose to, to show it. But if you never show it, how's people gonna see you? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's how I feel about this. So like the Marcus Garvey project, I think you need to put that out. I think you need to do it. Um, when it comes to, you know, like you said, the learning curves, right? Um, being a producer, creating your own content, uh, even writing. Just enjoy the powers in the pen, right? You're always gonna put yourself in a position to to also create more opportunities for what you're not getting. You know, the Marcus Garvey thing, I'm sure that this popped up because you're like, man, I'm getting these roles here, but there's something in me right now that, like you said, wants me to explore these oceans within myself. And I haven't gotten this opportunity yet, but I can write something, I can show that that will maybe open the door. You 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 say that. And when we was in Dominican Republic, I got a I got a call. Mm. They're like, cause they know I do comedy or whatever the case may be. For I got a call for a show on HBO. Mm. And they're like, hey man, um, would you? Hey, I really want you to be on the show to write on the show. Mm. Like. Do you have a, you know what I'm saying? Do you have a... Uh, we can see. Do you have something I can see? Blah, blah, blah. And I looked at it, and I was just like, motherfucker, I was like this. I was like, um, yeah, but it's not comedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm like, damn, this is a different realm, yeah. right? Now, in hindsight, if I was just like on my shit all the time, Right, especially writing like comedy shit, I could have probably been writing for the show right now. It, that that was just one one piece of like an opportunity that was just like, oh, we gonna try to give you this job. Yeah. But it, you know, it's, because it's it's talking about my it's talking about my city. It's talking about Miami. Mm-hmm. Like yo, and I was like. And at the time I was a thing, I was like, damn, I could have gone in as a consultant yeah. writer. And yeah. basically, yeah, yeah, this is right, this is not right, this is what we did. Yeah. And not knowing, I was just like, I flubbed. I was like, oh, shit, uh, the, not the guy, oh, shit, I ain't got nothing, mm. right? Compared to if I would have just said, yeah, because, you know, a lot of motherfuckers be lying. Hey, do you have, yes, yep. I have something. Yeah. When do you need it by? Mm-hmm. What, huh? Oh, Friday? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll send something. And motherfuckers just sit there and push a 10 page out of whatever mm. comedy. And, you know, and that could have. But at the same time, you know, I didn't want to lie. I didn't want to go into a space like, you know what, guys? I know y'all hired me for this job, but I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Because mm. I never want to be that person. In the first place. Not prepared. Yeah. Like, hey, Catfish, we need you to. And I, I've never been in the room like this before. But sometimes you got to fake it till you make it, right? You know, the line off the fake it till you make it thing, there's something I heard from uh, one of Jay Shetty's podcasts, but it, it, he said this line, or it's one of his guests, I got to tap into it, but it said, don't, don't fake it till you make it, fake it till you become it. Right. And I thought that was really interesting. It's like, fake it till you become it, you know, because it's like the whole fake it till you make it thing, it's like, well, once you make it, you don't need to fake it anymore right. but you fake it till you become it so it, even if you're not sure you're like well I can do it and, yeah. then, and then once you become you're like well, you're now becoming that person right. that you're like visualizing you know so the fake it to become it I was like I, I like applying that now you know I think that's so important because yeah you're just like I gotta just let's see, let's see what happens yeah, you know, you know and, but for next time I'm like okay cool 
um, I know what we're what to do for next time and uh, and stay prepared and, and be prepared. And that's all mm. you have to do, man, because you never know. Opportunities will always come your way, and you don't know how the opportunity is gonna come. And that was an opportunity, and you know, I just like. But it could have been also a thing of me being in Dominican Republic mm. and having to be in the room like a week later. Yeah. So. Just the timing of work. Yeah, it was just like, mm. uh, how am I going to do this? Like, you know, I don't want to be on Zoom, especially mm-hmm. with our bullshit ass internet. <laughs> Yo, in Dominican Republic, <laughs> literally, the whole city would black out. we we'll fucking go black. The, this, the power would go out a couple times. The hotel, we'd be playing Madden, boom, power goes out, it just black. So the internet was trash. So it's hard yeah. to communicate and do certain things out yeah. there, I understand, but which is funny, you know. What's something that you would tell any other actor or filmmaker come up in the business right now to look out for? What's the best advice you've ever heard? And I want to know what's the worst advice you've ever heard. Well, best advice I've ever heard. You know what, man? You know how sometimes people be keeping advice and things in their brain for situations like this? (laughs) Me, fuck. And you just tell me one thing. And it's like, I'm the type of person you could tell me, hey, man, I need to tell you this shit. Don't tell nobody. Mm-hmm. You tell me, and I fucking forget it. <laughs> in the next hour, and I'll be like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you did tell me that. Well, I would tell any actor that want to um, do this right. Mm. That's the game we're in right now. Facts. Right. Um, and I tell you this, I know some people that just because they wrote shit, now they're in shit. Now it's Simple. like they're acting in shit now. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, so I would, I would tell any actor, like, be a writer. Write. Don't only be an actor because... Yo, you're going to be sitting here waiting for a minute, man. And some people, you know what? It happens so fast with some people. Like, yeah. hey, I, I was just walking down the street and this agent from mm-hmm. CAA or ICM, yeah, they was like, yo, I like your look. And but that's I'm not something them. to go off of. They're like no. the, for the ones who got to work and put in the, yeah. the time for you it. Know you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, have a pen game or learn how to write. Um, the worst advice? I've ever heard the worst I've, advice I've ever heard is to go to Central Casting. <laughs> <laughs> go to Central Casting and get an agent. <laughs> it's the worst <laughs> advice. If you try to act, it's the wrong agency. Hey, wrong agency. That was the worst advice I was ever given. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I also like what we was talking about on the line where I said to you that um, when we first met, like I was very uh, guarded and to find out like, oh shit, the person you're, you know, guarding yourself, you're guarding yourself from, he's like a fucking great person because, you know, you go into situations you're thinking, oh, you're finding new friends and all this shit, mm-hmm. and then, then you figure out, like, oh, shit, nigga, this is just a job. and It's just work. It's just work, and yeah. you think you're building a relationship with somebody, and you're like, damn. You don't hear it from after you get You don't hear nothing but crickets. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up, buddy? You know what I'm saying? How you been? <laughs> they do this to you. Who did? Oh, fuck that. I ain't <laughs> But no, that's the real shit, though. With, with you, what was so great about you is that I actually saw you were just genuine. I was mm. like, damn, man, this motherfucker is really a genuine motherfucker, man. Man, thank you. And bro. um, I 
was like, cool. Because, man, people could hurt your heart in this industry. And, well, you know, once you find the right ones that mm-hmm. cool as shit, like, I could text you, you text me right back. Oh, God damn. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> this motherfucker is like me. And I was like, this is great. You know, we need people like that in our industry. Don't, it doesn't mean you have to be friendly or have mm-hmm. friendships with everybody, man. But when you find that, just go with it. Because you never, you never, you never, you never know what Facts. is going to happen out of this relationship. Mm-hmm. And, and I think with a lot of actors, we, we look at each other and it's... Oh, we look at each other, and it's always this. Uh, Almost like a comparison. It's not a comparison. It's like, What's what? Me? What was that? Sh- what was that shit? Issa Rae said. Uh, she said, "Don't always try to reach. Go with the people that's right here on the same level, and you guys could build up." Mm-hmm. Like she was saying, like if if you're here and you see somebody's here, you're always trying to reach to go grab that person. But nah, grab somebody else that's on your same level so you could both build and Get grow it. with each other. I love that. You know what I mean? It's just like we see, we worked with A listeners. Mm-hmm. We, <laughs> we ever going to hear from them again? Nah, nah man. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, well, we might be on the carpet like, who? Who, <laughs> who are you? No. Like, oh. Should I call you by your your character name? Yeah. <laughs> Should I call you by your character Reef. name? Reef. Reef. It's Dom. It's Dom, Dom man. Oh. Hey, good seeing you again, though, my brother. <laughs> All right, Reef. Um, you know, so, um, nah, man, be genuine. I appreciate be that. Be genuine. Man. You'll find great people. And, you know, if you, you know, you can either move up or figure it out. You know, you might work again. <clears throat> you might work again because my best friend works heavy in this industry and like we produce stuff with each other trying to build build and elevate push motivate so you never know what's gonna happen who's that next person gonna be your friend or you build a friendship with and you're like oh yeah man we met on this shit and look at us now we have this empire we're doing this we're Bro, doing that. You it's the I mean? realest thing because First of all, I just want to say I genuinely appreciate what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? That really like, means a lot to me because it's really my intention. You know, I feel like there's a big difference between being kind and being nice. Right. The nicest people are fake. I can be nice to you. Hi, yeah. Hey. Hi, hey. How you doing? Okay, good. Good to see you. Hey. Bye. Oh, my God. Did you? you know, it's, it's, it's nice and kind are two different things. Nice is, is a fake thing, but kind is when, you know, you really operate with you know, no expectation. You do things at a, at a generosity and and. For me, it's like, I remember when I first met you, bro, um, because Catfish, me and Arturo, we were talking about this, but you got this, like, like, Catfish has got, like, this, like, this, like, man's exterior where he's, like, it's like, it's like, it's like, like, like a man, bro, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, the way that you operate, you can tell that you're very choosy on what energy you allow into your atmosphere. And I can recognize that because the people in my family are very similar, like my brother, right, or my dad, right? Where uh, they, when you first meet them, they might not be as outgoing right away because they're trying to get a feel of like, who's this person, what's their vibe, what's their intentions, like, okay, cool, but like, you know, but then when you see consistency, it starts to show the characters of an individual and shit, we was out there for like two months and we saw the consistency of like, oh no, this is just how this guy is. Like, you know, straight up, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, and it's just like authentic as hell. There's no um, expectations. It was just very like, uh, uh, very genuine, like you said. And for me, um, I've entered every set I go into now, you know, I enter into the space of, you know, I would love to build friendships and relationships with everyone if I could, you know, that's organic and that's mm-hmm. real, but, uh, a lot of it is treated like summer camp sometimes. You're just there for the moment, and right. then you get all set. You don't really hear from them again until uh, the red carpet or whatever the, the, the event is going to be, you know? And um, so even me reaching out to you about coming on the podcast, and you'd be like, yeah, bro. And, like, I was like, oh, bro, I was like, that's so awesome. I appreciate the support because, like, being around you and other great actors that we got opportunity to build with, it was just 
again, an awesome experience. You know, it really helped me out and leveled me up in a lot of ways, just hearing the stories, just hearing what y'all went through, how you carry yourself, you know, um, where you're at now, and why you're doing what you're doing, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's powerful. I really feel like you're an individual that really has, you know, the ability to, to walk into the room and, and, and bring light and joy to anyone you're around, bro. Oh, and it you. really stands off of, again, the way you carry yourself, your work ethic, the way you actually talk to people, you know, everybody on set, man. Like, when I first got to DR, to, when we started filming on Roadhouse, I swear I kept hearing the name Catfish, Catfish. Oh my gosh, you, you hear about Catfish? I'm talking to the homies right now, to the videographers, but uh, literally, like, I'm hearing Catfish, Catfish, Catfish. I'm like, who the hell is Catfish? Why is this guy so popular? And I don't even know who this guy is. I meet Catfish, I'm like, Oh, he's just a cool ass dude. You know, he brings light. And I think that's so important because for actors and filmmakers that are out there, man, when you guys get on a set, when you guys get on a production, when you guys start working on whatever TV show, film you're doing, every day you got to be the person on set that makes it an enjoyable process to work with. You know, because when you're working on these projects for four or five months, it can either be one of the most blissful experiences or one of the most painful experiences the most pain in the ass experiences you can you know work with you know so you know again just having the community of people to really elevate and build with each other i think it's the most important thing that's why i talk about through all these episodes like how can we build how can i take my resources and the things i'm doing and vice versa and elevate and help each other out because at the end of the day i rather build up together like you said and not be in the frequency of always reaching because it's never going to stop right there's always, we can make 10 million tomorrow and the person who walks in the room who made 20 million, we're gonna be like, how'd you make 20 million? Right. We just got $10 million, bro. We can make 500 million, a billionaire walks. So it's, it's always gonna be that game of reaching. So having this like contentment within yourself to be like, no, this is what I'm doing. This is who I am. And let me work on building this daily is so important, right. you know, and um, having those habits, those routines. You know, every time I check your stories, like even though you post a lot of funny shit, <laughs> he always posts this thing. He's like, I'm at the bar drinking. And he's like, these like funny memes. But when I see you though, things that you're posting, it's work. Right. You know, you're posting what's going on with the movie to Leslie mm -hmm. right now. All the people that's talking about it. When I already know when you're posting about Roadhouse, but then when we got back, you're already getting back to working out. And you're just you're just on your grind. You're on your momentum. Right. And I feel like that's what manifests as the next opportunity, man. You know, so. Bro, you're a beast, bro. I appreciate you coming in today, man. Oh, thank you. You know man. what I'm saying? You uh, really, really add a lot of value. And I feel like a lot of people from this episode, if there's anything that I feel like you guys can take from this, is learning your value. You know, as an actor, as a filmmaker, as a content creator, know your value, man. Know your worth. Because there's going to come a day where you start making money for all the times that you didn't get paid. And the amount of money and the opportunities you're getting is because of all those nights of the free work, mm -hmm. all those days that you were putting in the time that nobody else saw, but you know you put in that work. And one of my favorite quotes is, you know, you could tell everybody uh, excuses and you get everybody to believe excuses except yourself. Mm. So don't ever lie to yourself. Never lie to yourself because everybody else can believe your excuses, mm -hmm. but not you. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you'll see, you know what I'm saying? So I know based on what we do today determines where we're gonna be at two years from now, you right. know what I'm saying? So being able to stay consistent, we have these healthy power talks, man. I see what you're doing. However I can support you, what you're doing, I have my resources, whatever, right. you got me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Thank I appreciate you. you even coming in today, bro. I, I got one more advice to give to actors. Once you guys get on mm -hmm. and start working, I'm looking into this goddamn camera. Yeah, this is the close-up right here. This once is the money you, shot. Once you guys <laughs> get on and start working, and you're in your trailer, and you have your clothes, hang your shit back up. <laughs> hang your shit. I'm telling you, the reason why I say that it's is so because <laughs> you hang your shit back up, customers will give you whatever the fuck you, you want. want. You treat people like you want to be treated, and I guarantee you, it will go a long way. 